This video is part 2 of a two part series. Be sure to watch part 1 if you haven't. So when we left off, we had established that Heather's father was Harry Mason from the first game, and Douglas, the private detective sent to find Heather by Claudia, was going to take Heather to Silent Hill and help her fix this whole mess, because Douglas feels partly responsible for what is happening. Douglas is a pretty cool dude. As you leave the apartment, Douglas mentions that he met a guy named Vincent, and Vincent said to meet a guy named Leonard in the hospital in Silent Hill. Although Heather rightfully doesn't trust Vincent, He's a friend of yours, right? Sure. It is the only lead they have. On the car ride to Silent Hill, we get a very nice cutscene where Heather begins to remember some important information about herself. She recalls the abuse that she slash Alessa felt 17 years ago. The bullying at school because of her unique abilities. You see, that girl had special powers. Powers? Her classmates called her a witch. And the abuse at home dealt by her mother, Dahlia. She tried to summon the ancient god of the town. She offered up her very own daughter. That's crazy. She basically just explains the first game. I love the sweet moment when Heather fondly remembers her father Harry and regrets not telling him how important he was to her. All while this cool 2000s soft rock track, Letter from the Last Days, plays in the background. He loved me just like I was his very own daughter. Even though he didn't know who or what I was. It was so sudden. I never had a chance to tell you, to tell you how happy you made me. When you get to Silent Hill, Douglas offers to go to Leonard's home while you go to the hospital to see if Leonard is there. You agree to meet back in this motel room to discuss your findings, and Douglas opens up about being afraid. You're right. I am afraid. I'm 50 something years old. I never see nothing like this. And finally, you get to roam around in Silent Hill. Unfortunately, this is really the only time you get to explore the town. Not that it matters, there's really nothing to do here. You can, however, visit Heaven's Night, the strip club from the second game, and just, um, hang out. This is definitely not the first time we've seen a hospital in a Silent Hill game. There's some key differences between this one and the one in Silent Hill 2. First of all, I think this one looks better. I just think Silent Hill 3 is a beautiful looking game. But the biggest difference is the Otherworld version of the hospital. In the second game, the Otherworld version of it has more of a dreary and lonely feeling, which fits nicely with James' story. In Silent Hill 3, it's a lot bloodier and chaotic, which fits into the themes of childbirth and childbearing of this game very nicely. A big part of this hospital level is Stanley Coleman. Stanley Coleman is basically a Pokemon tier 3 sub. His comments are so cute and nice. No, but seriously, Stanley is a man in the hospital that leaves incredibly creepy notes to Heather, along with his prized doll to commemorate their meeting they never met, and the start of this everlasting love. In this room, you can find a note written by one of the doctors about Stanley. It reads, Room S07. Usually passive and cowardly, also egotistical, sometimes shows and acts on obsessive attachment to a particular woman. This has caused violent incidents. Use caution. Stanley seems to not only show an unhealthy attachment to people, in this case Heather, but also objects. His prized doll is the first example, but later on you go to the room he stayed at, or stays at, and find a bunch of objects glued to the wall, one being a key that you use nail polish remover to get it. He sort of helps you out once or twice, like in this note, he says one of the doctors left the key behind the shelves in the underground garage. You use a camera that you picked up earlier to get a picture of the key that's back there.
I personally noticed the theme of Heather continuously being forced to trust older men, Vincent, Douglas, and now this obviously very ill and obsessed man Stanley. Could be some statement on a woman's experience. I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting thing to point out. Maybe one of you can expand on that and give that theory some legs, you know? Anyway, it's unclear whether Stanley is a ghost of a real person, or if he's a manifestation created by the town that represents Heather's fear of stalkers. I believe the latter, just because it fits into the rest of the game and its symbology a lot better. Moving along, when you go to this room, you receive a call from a man that believes you are Claudia. Hello? Claudia. No, I'm not- Don't lie to me, Claudia. You're always trying to run from your responsibilities. Have you come to apologize? Or maybe you still don't realize how foolish you've been. You explain that you are not Claudia and realize that this is Leonard Wolf, Claudia's father, and the man you came to Silent Hill to look for. Heather, will you help me? Help you? I'm locked up in here, and I must stop Claudia. Where are you now? I'm not sure myself, but the door is at the end of the hall on the second floor. I think I can be of help to you. I have a seal. Please. That door wasn't actually there before, but you enter it and begin a transition into the other world. Before entering the other world, you get a vision of Lisa, Alessa's nurse in the first game traumatized at Alyssa's condition. Heather seems to remember her, she says, but that nurse, I know her, Lisa, who was so heavenly towards me in that hellish hospital room. She did get a little weird though. Yeah, a little bit. When going through this door, you have to climb this long ladder where you see Valtiel. I'll read you this bit from the Silent Hill wiki about Valtiel. As God's attendant, that's what he is. Valtiel observes Heather in order to ensure the birth of God. His garb consisting of a mask, smock, is reminiscent of surgical wear, symbolizing his role as a midwife, where he helps to deliver the reborn God. This is a rather emergent theme in Silent Hill 3, which focuses around maternity as seen in Heather being a mother of God. It also becomes more obvious later in the game that Valtiel is constantly watching and following Heather. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you die, a cutscene will play of Valtiel dragging Heather to presumably make sure of the safety of God inside of her. I think this whole watching and following around could play into Heather's fear of stalkers. But that's just a theory. A shit theory. You also find a creature here that goes by the name of Fukuro Lady, which appears to always be in some sort of uh, bondage. Look, if you want to know the reason why she's here, I think you'll know why as soon as you visit Masahiro Ito's Twitter account. Oh my god, epic. This is literally just research, I, I have to do this for the video. Anyway, you then enter the other world, or a bunch of stuff doesn't load and your game crashes. The Otherworld version of the hospital is pretty gross. The whole place feels like it's alive. The walls appear to be pulsating with veins and what looks like extreme heat. People theorize that this environment is symbolic of a uterus, tying into the game's themes of impregnation and birth. The hospital as one of the most iconic scenes in the game, maybe in all Silent Hill games, the mirror room. In the third floor, when you enter this storeroom, you'll find a giant mirror. The door locks behind you and you will be stuck here. Just you and your reflection. The room that you're in will slowly fill with bloody tendrils, as well as Heather's reflection. There's many theories about the symbology of this room. My personal favorite is that it symbolizes Heather's personal insecurities, as it is something we can all relate to, especially from when we were teenagers. Feeling inadequate, negative body image. A lot of pregnant women also get these feelings, if you want to arcum back to the themes of childbirth of the game. Before we move on, I just want to mention a cool detail. There's a secret, sort of secret, cutscene of a phone call. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but basically the caller mentions that he is not Stanley, the stalker that has been following Heather, and says that Stanley's new name is number seven. When you go all the way down to the elevator to the crematorium, and you approach corpse number seven, you will hear desperate gasping. It's 
As if someone is desperately reaching out for Heather. That is, presumably, Stanley. I thought that was pretty cool, I don't know. So you do an epic ritual and gain access to where Leonard is being kept. And you two have a bit of a dialogue. Only we, who hearken to the voice of God, will be given the keys to paradise. Don't you think so, Heather? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and think whatever you want. Anything you will get from me is a gruesome death. This is your next boss fight. I would say this is one of the better boss fights in the game, but even then, it's not amazing. You mostly just wait for him to come out of the water and blast him with a shotgun. Oh yeah, I replayed the game and I got the shotgun. But yeah, the boss fights aren't the strongest part of the game. But let's get into the good stuff. Something unique about Leonard is that he is the only monster that speaks to you in a regular human voice. Which leads fans to theorize that he's actually a regular human that Heather sees as a aquatic monster. Or if he's being punished by the town or the order for his physical abuse of his daughter, Claudia. I personally believe he has taken this form as punishment for what he did to Claudia. Don't worry, the next cutscene will give some more context into that whole thing. His hands have become these useless stumps so that he can't hurt her anymore. Or you could see them as clubs to symbolize what he did to her. After you defeat Leonard, you're back in the regular hospital. Well, not regular, this, this place sucks. Don't ask me why, I just woke up in a fucking steaming room, yeah? Because I live in a shithole! I hate the fucking place! I fucking hate it! It's full of dickheads! I fucking hate it! Heather wakes up and picks up the seal of Metatron. This is what Vincent wanted you to get. When leaving the hospital, you get a cutscene of Claudia and Vincent in the motel room. Claudia seems very angry that Vincent sent Heather to her father, and the cutscene really speaks for itself. So let's just watch. You hated your father, didn't you? I saw the way he hit you, and kicked you, and made you cry. The memory of his cruelty is forever burned into my mind. Yes, yes, and that's why we need God. What you call faith is nothing more than a child crying out for love. That's why you're all alone. understand. None of you do. I really loved how that cutscene centered on Vincent. We really get to see how most of what he says is really just to manipulate others. He doesn't really care that Claudia was horribly mistreated. He just wants to get her to see the world the way he does. I want to focus on something he said because it gives some context to something I said in part one. I know about the pleasures of this world. And I want to find my happiness while I'm still here. In part one, I talked about the stark differences between Vincent and Claudia's design. I think this line helps to show that the church or the order is definitely not his first priority. And by his design, we can conclude that he's more interested in the material than the spiritual. So you make your way to the motel room. Fucking hate this place! No jobs, no security! Everybody's a cunt! And of course, Douglas isn't there. It's just our favorite Linkara cosplayer, Vincent. Now, there is no question that we can't really trust him, because he lies right to our faces. Was there someone else here just now? No, no, just me. Don't you want to know what the message is? Yeah, what did he say? The church is on the other side of the lake. Church? I wonder what he meant by that. You don't understand? <laughs> That's where Claudia is. Across the lake. On the north side. If you're going, you better go through the amusement park. 
It's probably the only way in now. Go northwest on Nathan Avenue. It's a bit far, but closer than heaven. Is that it for the message? Uh-huh. Thanks. Douglas really said that? What's wrong? You don't trust me? No. Now you make your way to the amusement park, and it instantly turns into the Otherworld version of it. back where the game started. And in part one, I presented my theory, I humbly presented my theory, that the town was making fun of Heather with this whole amusement park and the whole dead, uh, cute, like, mascot thing, and you guys didn't like it. So let's just say it symbolizes an end in Heather's childhood. Is that better? Do you like it? If you don't, then you can't watch my videos, you can't buy my epic merch, you can't- you basically followed the same route as you did in the beginning, but this time there's a roller coaster key, so you don't get squished. So you go over to the control room, turn off the roller coaster, and you still get squished. LOL. We then get a confrontation between Claudia and Douglas. You're going to kill me? Is it really so easy for you? I've done it before. Then I truly do pity you. He's so cool! You wake up on top of the ticket booth and go over to the haunted house. I hate the haunted house. That's Danny. A quiet young man. It's basically just a bunch of cheap jump scares. So we're just gonna ignore this because this game is perfect, shut up. You then go visit Douglas. He's pretty badly hurt from whatever Claudia did to him. But he's a big boy, he'll be fine. We do get some backstory on old Douglas, which is quite nice. You, you remind me of my son. You said nobody was going to cry for you. Dead people don't cry. Stupid kid got himself shot robbing his bank. But why? Maybe because his pop was a penniless good for nothing. No. Anyway, now I guess I'll never find out. <sighs> Sorry. I shouldn't have said you reminded me of a guy like you. <laughs> he then starts morbing out and points a gun at Heather. Some people see this moment and start disliking Douglas, but hear me out. To both Douglas and Heather, Heather dying seems like the only option to end this whole thing. But even then, he didn't do it. You know what that means? He's so cool! Moving forward, you get to a place that might be familiar. This is where in Silent Hill 1, you can save right here. And now, you can actually read what Harry wrote down. Which is so awesome, and it adds a little more depth to Harry as a character. To be able to get a read on his thoughts in that moment of the game. You then get to the carousel, where you have to kill these carousel horses. Which I think helps symbolize the killing of Heather or Alessa's childhood, or innocence. After that, you get probably the best fight in the game. The memory of
this is, in my opinion, the best fight because you're not constantly fighting the camera and it actually forces you to use the defense mechanic. This fight also has, of course, a lot of symbolic significance. The Silent Hill wiki reads, The battle also seems to symbolize Heather slash Alessa considering suicide. The memory of Alessa representing the pain, dark emotions and suffering that make Alessa think it would be better for her to die and her attempts to kill Heather are those dark emotions trying to overwhelm Heather. But her fighting back against the memory of Alessa represents her determination to keep going and face what will come instead of choosing death. Even after all that Alessa and Heather have gone through, she still chooses life. You know what that means? She's so cool. So you make your way to the church and have a confrontation with Claudia. Heather tries to convince Claudia that she is Alessa and she doesn't want to birth this god and she never wanted to. Of course, it doesn't reach her because she's brain dead. <laughs> Next, we have the last level in the game, the church. The first thing you interact with when you get to the church is this confession booth. This woman will confess to you like, boohoo, I killed someone. Get over it. A theory about the scene that I've always liked is that that woman that is confessing is actually Dahlia, Alessa's mother. She mentions her poor murdered daughter, which could be referring to Alessa. She also mentions a girl whose life I have taken, which could be referring to Cheryl. It also gives you a choice of forgiving her or not saying anything. I mean, if anyone has the right to forgive her or not, it would be Heather slash Alessa, not some priest or god for that matter. Let's talk about the church for a second. This is a super important place for Alessa, Heather and Claudia. After all, this is where they grew up. There's a constant theme of hospital and burning, symbolizing Alessa's burning and then hospitalization. There's actually a point where you visit Alessa's hospital room and it's absolutely demoralizing. When you leave the room, a bunch of insane cancers will show up, which I think confirms the theory from part one that the insane cancer is how Alessa saw herself and what a horrible thing to see yourself as. Now, this place is peak Silent Hill aesthetics. No, seriously, this place is fucking disgusting and I love it. I know I'm repeating myself, but this game just looks amazing. Anyway, we gotta talk to Vincent and we get possibly one of the most iconic lines of this game and a very interesting question. I'm just looking out for myself. Everyone does it. <laughs> Don't stand there looking so smug. You're the worst person in this room. You come here and enjoy spilling their blood and, and listening to them cry out. You feel excited when you Step on them and snuff out their lives. Are you talking about the monsters? Monsters? They look like monsters to you? <gasps> oh no. Don't worry. It's just a joke. So, they look like monsters to you? Now, I think Vincent is just making shit up, but let's really think about this. Vincent is insinuating that these monsters are just regular, innocent people. And there are some monsters that seem quite humanized. Look at Leonard, for example, Claudia's father. He has a normal human voice and is able to interact just like any other person. Yet, he looks like a monster to you. Think whatever you want, but because of Vincent, you'll never be 100% sure. It really shows how evil Vincent is in the most subtle way. Since we're on the topic of Vincent, there's a letter in a cult member's room that talks about him. People are starting to voice their dissatisfaction with Father Vincent, using the organization's money for his own benefit. I've also heard rumors that Father Vincent has been extorting donations from some followers. Is he really the right person for such a position? I mean, no place to deny all he's done to make the organization grow. Even though we believe in God, if there were some sort of gathering, shouldn't we be valued not for our limited talents or our talkativeness, but for the depths of our faith? So it seems the cult was put in kind of a similar situation to Heather, where they can't help but trust Vincent because he helped them grow financially, 
but they think a lot of his actions are reprimandable or manipulative. You also get to visit Claudia's room, where you find a birthday card given to her by Alyssa. It's amazing how one simple detail can be so effective at humanizing this character you're supposed to hate. Claudia was just a little girl that was taken advantage of by the organization, same as Alessa or Heather. And the fact that she kept this all these years really shows how much she cared about Alessa. They spent their time together here and were probably the only real company they had. They probably played games together, like Maple Story. I've played this game a lot and I still don't understand what the fuck. So you go over to Alessa's old room and reminisce for a bit and solve this tarot card puzzle. The puzzle itself is nothing special, but the cards are pretty cool. First, we have the Eye of Night card. This card doesn't actually exist in a real tarot deck. Here it symbolizes God, or some people believe it symbolizes Valtiel because he follows Heather and sees everything. The full card is representative of Heather or Alessa, perhaps because of the fact that they have been used and manipulated for the organization for so many years. The Hangman card symbolizes Douglas and his helplessness throughout this whole wacky adventure. He really is just an innocent man caught in something that he does not understand. The High Priestess is, of course, Claudia. That one is pretty self-explanatory. And finally, the Moon card is Vincent. Here's what Hiroyaku Owaku had to say about the Moon card and Vincent. The Moon card can mean uneasiness or distrust of inconsistency. I thought that the personality of Vincent, who does not speak plainly to others and makes them uneasy, was applicable to the Moon, so I included this card into the game. After solving this puzzle, we go through this place to get to the chapel. nightmare just like less than 17 years ago if this really is the work of God then I'd say she has lousy taste you mock God traitor you will go to hell not that again who do you think you are claiming to know God's will? Go home, Vincent. Home? This church is my home. I built it with my power. The power of money that you view with such scorn. You know, I actually kind of agree with Vincent here. A lot of religious organizations scoff at those that focus too much on the materialistic things, yet they all need money to exist. Continue to get in my way. Did you kill me? Well. <laughs> well. The guest of honor has arrived. Let's get this party started. Heather? Go ahead and kill this crazy bitch! You go to hell! <laughs> Heather! Use the seal! Vincent? The seal of Metatron? Now you're stupid dream is over! Oh, that's just a piece of junk. Mm. Oh, no. Just accept it, Alessa. The pain will disappear. Waiting so long for this. Even as a child, I knew I would see the coming of this day. You, I would be a witness to it. <laughs> Judgment Day. <sighs> Alessa. You then use the pendant that your father Harry gave you. Dad.
Looks like God didn't make it. Stop! God is... Yeah, I don't think I need to explain this imagery. Now we are at the last boss fight in the game. Mechanically it's pretty simple, wait for God to come down, shoot her and dodge this fire. It is pretty fun, although it is very basic. So let's talk about God's appearance. God appears as a huge half skeletal being whose face resembles a cracked porcelain mask with the likeness of Alessa Gillespie, Heather's previous incarnation. This is likely because the manifestation of God, as previously established in the first Silent Hill, takes on the appearance of what the host or ritual performer perceives God to look like. Clearly, Claudia looked up to Alessa quite a lot. According to her, Alessa not only would birth God, she was God. That is, if that theory is true. But I personally think that God looking like Alessa is the game showing Heather is confronting her past fully. After this fight, Heather begins to cry. After everything she has gone through, she is finally able to feel what has happened. Not just physically react, but really feel what has happened. Silent Hill 3 is, in a way, a coming of age story. And like any good coming of age story, it's bittersweet to the very end. Ha, 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 ha.